Welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Welcome to Coffee with a Googler, I'm Lawrence Moroni, and today I'm gonna to be chatting with Brian Dorsey, who's a developer advocate on our cloud team. And we're gonna be talking all about containers. Right. And if anybody's been any way associated with web or cloud or anything for about the last 18 months, that containers are this red hot topic. And what's all the fuss? Can you tell us all about it? Absolutely. And I think I think it's definitely about fundamentally about developer efficiency and operations efficiency. Okay. You know, there, and there's a whole bunch of technical things that kind of like the packaging and distribution of this stuff that okay. gets us there. But it's really nice. just about letting you spend more time on building your stuff rather okay. than trying to keep it happy. I mean, in, in, in like a, the two-minute elevator pitch, what is a container? Yeah. What's, what's all the fuss? Um, so it's a you know it's implemented on the Linux kernel um, and with file system stuff. Um, a set of APIs that when you use together, it makes a nice little encapsulation for your okay. software. So you've got a file system and actually process rights carved up in a little box. And so you can make sure that you know your machine, your software always runs the same way. Around. You've probably had the experience of like, uh, uh, yeah. works on my machine, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And doesn't, it doesn't work on somebody else. else's, yes. So like, you know, at some level, like that's one of the key things you're solving here, is that okay. since you have the exact same file system, Every time you run it, it works the same way everywhere. OK. Um, and then with the process level stuff, you also get um, really nice controls of like how much of the processor, host processor it can use. OK. Um, so you can keep it, you know, if, if you've got some Brian code running, you can keep it from <laughs> going a little crazy. Uh, Brian code. Yeah. <laughs> That's a code word for uh, maybe a little bit rushed. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Now, it, it sounds like when we start talking about like you know templatizing operating systems, all this kind of thing, that's that's for big enterprises to be able to use. But that that's not really the case, right? It, it, so this stuff is useful at all levels. And in fact, you know the you know the the big kind of push, you know, eighteen months to two years ago, um, these APIs have been around in Linux for a long time. But uh, Docker, the company, um, kind of wrapped it up very nicely in a nice UI, made it very easy to use. And their focus was you know very much on the developer experience. Okay. So regardless of kind of how big you know the eventual end production you know size is it helps you as a developer right. run uh, your stuff more cleanly help you collaborate with other developers help you collaborate with the test folks so when you hand off something they get to test the exact same thing and then okay. that same thing goes into production okay. work in the same way now at Google we have this Kubernetes offering. Yeah. Like what, what what is that all about? So that comes out of you know Google's been running containers internally for a very long time, and um, you may have heard that uh, you know the the initial kind of kernel API work was actually mm -hmm. kind of um, pushed into Linux kernel starting from engineers at Google. Right. Um, so we've got a bunch of experience doing that, but it's all kind of uh, you know it's built up internally and it's all connected to our system. So um, the Kubernetes project is an open source project to kind mm -hmm. of bring those same patterns out into the whole world. So we've got, it's open source, it's up on GitHub. Um, it runs on a wide variety of places. So you can, you can run Kubernetes on uh, Compute Engine and on Google Cloud, but you can also run it on AWS. You can run it on your own computers. Uh, cool. You can run it all over the place. And I haven't really said what it is. So, so once you have these like units of a container, Right, so uh, I've got my one process, and it runs really well. What happens when I want a thousand of those, mm -hmm. cooperating with dozens of some other process and mm -hmm. like hundreds of some other process, and and all of a sudden I've got this, you know, these are all like running on hundreds of hosts, maybe. Right. So this is a big example. Right. Um, how do you keep track of it all? And so Kubernetes really helps with that. That's its core mission, uh, using these templates you talked right. about, and things. But then, as an individual developer, if you just are trying to make a copy of production that's small enough. That you can actually get it to run, right? Um, but it still needs like a front end, a database, cache, you know, yep. the various pieces. Um, you can spin up just kind of one of each okay. small ones and have the whole thing up and okay. working the same way. Are there any good examples of that that are out there? Maybe yeah. somebody has documented. Or um, <laughs> a little leading, um, but uh, <laughs> like, we might be thinking of the same thing. Um, one of the uh, other developer advocates, Julia Ferrioli, wrote a really nice post on uh, a series of posts on using. Uh, Docker and Kubernetes to okay. actually run a Minecraft server. Okay. And you know, Minecraft is this just you know amazing block-oriented kind of virtual world thing um, with lots and lots of plugins. So one of the things that's challenging is how do you make sure that your Minecraft world is safe when you start experimenting with different plugins and you want to kind of roll forward a new versions right. and back, and then you want it to stay running all the time because 
you don't want to, you know, like like all software, you don't want to be like page in the middle of the night because yeah. you know, your Minecraft server's down. Right, and also uh, from my understanding, if you want to build a Minecraft server, it's yep. like you're not just getting Linux and MySQL and maybe Apache. There's all these other things that you need to install uh, and yeah. then encapsulate that and able to clone that because yeah. of containers. So they've got you know official uh, Docker images of you know all the stuff Minecraft needs to run. Right, and then you can light that up and go. Um, and then Kubernetes gets you the management side of that, and you know networking. And um, you, in one way to think about it, I guess is kind of like if you're familiar with process runners like mm -hmm. System D, um, you get like something like System D, but spread across a bunch of machines. I see. Um, so you're like, I want to make sure ten copies of this are always running no matter what. Right. And you just hand it off, and then the system actually keeps that happening. So instead of just you know you kind of follow a to-do list maybe, mm -hmm. but at the end you just hope it keeps working. Uh, in the Kubernetes world, you say, I want 10 of these running always. OK. And if anything happens with any of those, Kubernetes will go and then start a new one somewhere else. You know, right. you know if a whole host goes away or. OK. So like, like in summary, it's almost like you know, the, the Docker and the containers technology is allowing me to build these easy replicable machines. But yep. then Kubernetes adds on top of that to make it really easy to manage. Exactly. And okay. you know, assembling them all together into a real system, right? Because uh, all systems are like pretty complicated, right? You know, yeah. you, you, they, and they, they kind of grow. And they're always more complicated than you thought than, they were going to be. Than you wanted be. them to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, then trying to replicate that in other environments, um, that's where it really is very powerful. Cool. Um, now, how was it? How would a developer get started with all of this? Right. Um, so it does run kind of anywhere, right? So yeah. you know, you can run on your own machines and and run in ABS, run it in Google Cloud. Um, because of some of the things it does to make it really easy to connect these pieces together, um, setting up the networking piece of it can be a little bit challenging if you're not in a cloud environment. Okay. Um, so my recommendation, you know, maybe this is a little bit biased, but definitely the <laughs> easiest way to get started is to use the Google Cloud free trial, and uh, there's a one-click startup for a Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So you can literally go down and hit a button and say, "Give me a Kubernetes cluster." A few minutes later, you'll have a live cluster that you can push Minecraft to or your software or whatever else you'd like cool. to. To run. Um, also, I think, and that's, I think the key there is kind of separating, uh, getting the cluster up and running versus like running your software on it. Right. Because the 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 new stuff here, in 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 a, in a way, is really kind of thinking about building your software out of small pieces and then defining how those connect to each other in this okay. kind of template. And so that's a really easy way to play with that. Okay. Um, cool. And then when you're like, okay, I want to run it in this specific place, you can like fiddle with. Cluster admin is a separate process from, got it. Kind of got it. Running software in one of these clusters. Nice. So it's you can really getting started with the one button for Kubernetes, yeah. but yeah. then you can really start building stuff in the cloud. Yep. Be a Minecraft server or maybe some other kind of server that you want to run. I I fiddled with uh, building 3D rendering servers, and this was pre-containers. Right. So every machine I had like a thousand things that I needed to install and. Then I had to do it again the next time, and, and again the versions. next time, and, and it was just—it drove me crazy. And, and this is just—it's this is you know partly coming from just containers, but then when you start thinking about a whole system of these, yeah. it makes upgrading your system really easy, right? Because yeah. each version has the exact pieces it needs. Mm -hmm. But the other kind of magic thing there that I I never achieved personally is so I got to where I had automated upgrades of systems working, right? But getting it so you could do a downgrade, you could roll back to a previous version. That's tricky. That's harder. Yeah. And containers and Kubernetes together like allow you to do that. And it's the exact same process to roll forward a version as it is to roll back. Interesting. Because you have this atomic unit. Right. Um, and cool. that's really exciting. So developers get started on the Google yep. Cloud console? So that's a great place to go. The other thing to do is check out Kubernetes.io. Um, okay. So I'll give you that link. And um, got a bunch of overview information there and then a hint of you know, a link to the GitHub site. Okay. Where all the active uh, stuff is going, and as a developer perspective, it's really fun because there's a huge number of core, you know, like people from Google who built like our orchestration stuff internally, Borg right. and Omega, um, but also you know a bunch of folks from Red Hat and CoreOS and a bunch of other folks from the open source community, a lot of individuals as well, and so you get to see all of these people like doing code review and arguing over design, <laughs> like in public. So if you've ever wondered how Googlers do code review or like argue, it's a really fun place to go check it out. Um, so that, 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 yeah, I could sell tickets for that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Brian, and yeah. thanks everybody for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot about containers and Kubernetes and managing containers and how all that works. If you want to learn more about this, check out 
out the links in the description below. And if you want to see any more content around Kubernetes or any more cloud content, check out the Google Developers channel. If you have any questions for me or any questions for Brian, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much.